hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new here my name is grace and today's video is going to be a list of books that i think you should read this summer and i've kind of had a bit of a brainwave or rather i was just stood at my bookcases and i was like looking at all of them and thinking i love that book i've got to reread that this summer i love that one because i read that last summer and loved it so i've got to reread it this summer so i thought i'd do a video of all the books that i love at summertime and if you're struggling for reads when the sun's out and you just want something gripping or something funny I have you covered so let's get into those list of books and hope you enjoy. The first book on my list is one that basically got me in a love for this writer and it is surprising that I read this one first and it is Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty and I was due to this cover in summertime obviously because it's got a pool and you've got the deck chairs and I thought oh that looks like it's gonna be a fun read and I wouldn't say fun is the word to describe this book. This is gripping, it is dark, it's mysterious, it's exciting. And I think if you know of Leanne Moriarty, if you've heard of Big Little Lies, and you will know that her writing is very kind of obsessive. It's full of darkness and mystery, and you're not sure what you're going to get. And behind every character, there is a fatal flaw. There is a secret that nobody knows about, and it's all going to come out. And obviously something big is going to happen that's going to be either criminal or... Well, yeah, pr pretty much it's going to be criminal. Um, and if you haven't seen the Amazon Prime adaptation of this, I can strongly recommend that too because I binged that and it was so good. Um, but basically, it's about a luxury retreat in the middle of nowhere and we have all this this group of obviously nine strangers that come together to the tr retreat for varying reasons, but basically to get themselves better whether it's because I mean Frances is a writer and she's struggling with writer's block she's having a bit of an identity crisis a midlife crisis as well and she's come out of a relationship and she just doesn't feel confident in herself anymore and then we have Ben and Jessica who are a relationship he has won the lottery and she's basically a influencer and their relationship and marriage is struggling um we have a family of three who have gone through a pretty traumatic experience and what and one of their children have died and we have tony and i'm trying to think who else we have i think that's it i'm not sure i can't count in my head while i'm trying to remember characters but basically what you have to know is the this group of people all different and they come together and they're thrown in at the deep end by this woman who runs the resort called Masha and we slowly reveal that she's watching pretty much their every move and with every chapter it gets darker and darker what she kind of pushes them to do and it all very quickly gets into very dangerous territory but it is so perfect I mean I'm not one to call a book perfect but this for me was mystery and crime and kind of it lulled you into a sense of false security basically because you think you're getting this group of people that are probably just going to argue and that's what you're thinking and they're just not going to get along and it's going to be a bit annoying but then it's all going to end happily and they'll all love each other but no if you haven't read Leanne Moriarty I can't recommend her enough I mean I would say this is probably her best book followed by Big Little Lies but her writing is great if you're one for a bit of kind of normalcy mixed in with what the hell is going on here. Next up, we have another beachy looking book, but do not be fooled by this cover because whilst it looks absolutely glorious and maybe even a little bit romantic, there is nothing romantic about it. Um, this was such a page turner. It was... I mean it had my breath a few times and <laughs> I don't it's if you love mother and daughter books I would recommend this and if you're a crime lover if you're a mystery lover if you're someone who loves a bit of kind of you think you know it all but you don't then this is for you so Sylvie is brought back to her family home um in the south of France um and it basically face forces her to face the fact that she hasn't gone back there since the death of one of her children um, and Sylvie goes with her youngest child Emma 
and what goes on from there is mental it is crazy you are not gonna believe what happens um i don't want to spoil too much because i am aware that there are so many little things that lead up to a massive revelation in this book um, but what i can tell you it's filled with lovely descriptions that are mixed in with dark undertones it is beautiful it is terrifying at times and you just won't guess it i mean it was it was one of those books that you can read by the pool in a day if that's what you're looking for then this is it's an obsession <laughs> well at least to me it was so if you're looking for something that's a bit of a thriller it's got a bit of compellingness then i would say this because the dynamics between sylvie and her youngest daughter are just nuts <laughs> So this is a bit different than the two books I've just told you about, which are thrillers and dark. This is a romance and it is You Had Me, You Can't Speak, You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. And I love the cover of this book. I am one for a bit of cheese, a bit of romance, a bit of predictableness, especially in the summertime. And what led me to this book was because I had just finished watching an American telenovela on Netflix called Jane the Virgin, which if you haven't seen, I can highly recommend. It is brilliant. It's funny. It's witty. And the same can be said for this book. And I had Googled books that are like the TV show Jane the Virgin and this author came up and I rushed to Waterstones to buy it of course um but what it's about is it is set kind of around telenovelas uh the two actors well the two <laughs> characters are both actors in telenovelas we have Jasmine and we have Ashton and Ashton has just been fired from his telenovela that he was on and he's trying to break into the American telenovela market and Jasmine is pretty much thriving and they are put on this telenovela together and there is tension, there is a bit of dislike at the start but then obviously what ensues is a romance that is quite hot and heavy I will say. So if you're looking for something with a bit of steam then this is for you. Um, I think it's not as awkward as I was expecting it to be. Sometimes I'm there are steamier scenes in books. I can find them a bit clunky. They don't fit well. But this actually was pretty good. Um, and it is, you know, it is a cheesy read. It's not going to have you gripped with every page. But it is easy. And it is just so simple to pick up, basically. <laughs> which is why it's an easy read. Um, but yeah, I think their dynamic in the book it it's nice and it's sweet and it's nothing that's going to have your head wrapped around and I think on those summery nights when you're sat in the back garden or you're out and about and you just want to sit down on a bench this is one of those books that you can just flick through a couple of pages put it back in your bag and go on with your day so I will recommend this for all you romance lovers out there next up I would say this book is a mix of romance it's a mix of thriller and it's a contemporary read and that is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So if you've read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo or Daisy Jones and the Six, this is I think her latest book currently out and the cover is gorgeous, obviously giving summer vibes straight away and the book is just sun drenched in romance, in secrets and <laughs> sibling rivalry and it is great because it links to her other books as well, which I really appreciated. There are hints to uh, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo in here, Daisy Jones and the Six. So you get those references and it's really nice to kind of have an author that's created her own world and popular culture, basically. Um, but this book is about a group of siblings and it's all set with obviously memories from other days but it's all set on one night and this night basically changes the course of everything for each sibling they're all keeping something or they all feel a certain way that they haven't shared and it just details that and it was so addictive i love taylor jenkins read i don't know what it is about her i don't know if it's the lightness that is mixed with kind of reality of kind of the human condition we're all kind of keeping things to ourselves and you know family dynamics um in the book are you know portrayed as you know real and there's disagreements here and there and not everything is peachy keen um so that is what i do like about it and it is full of emotion as well i mean each character is so complex 
and they've all got obviously they've all got their own personalities but they're believable that's what i like about it as well so i will read you the blurb if that kind of description isn't enough to have you hooked malibu august 1983 it's the day of nina river's annual end of summer party and anticipation is at a fever pitch everyone who's anyone wants an invite to catch a glimpse of the famous reva siblings nina the talented surfer and supermodel brothers jay and hud one a championship surfer the other a renowned photographer and their adored baby sister kit Together, the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as the children of the legendary singer Mick Reaver. By midnight, the party will be completely out of control. By morning, the Reaver mansion will have gone up in flames. But ahead of that first spark, in the early hours before dawn, the alcohol will flow, the music will play, and the loves and secrets that shape this family will all come bubbling to the surface. So, as you can tell, it is gripping it is it's just delightful in how well done and wrapped up it becomes at the end so if you're looking for something that is beachy it's set in a summery location malibu rising is definitely the one for you the fifth and final book on my summer what you must read list is the break by marianne keys and i think i've read this book probably two or three times now and it is such whilst it is chunky I can get through this probably in one and a half days because it is that addictive and it is hilarious. If you haven't read Marianne Keys, her writing style is very honest. It's very vulnerable. Uh, she says things that I think pretty much most people think but would never say. Um, and yeah, it's just very witty and it will have you laughing out loud. But the break is about Amy and her husband Hugo decides he needs a break, he needs to get away, he needs to get away from their relationship, their children, their home, all to go on a trip around Asia. And if that isn't enough to get your blood boiling, <laughs> Amy kind of goes on this own her own journey of self-discovery of why her husband feels the need to leave her and her children in limbo and whether she knows he's going to come back or not. And she doesn't have contact with him for six months either. And with her family they're kind of nosy they want to have their opinions so it's a big kind of collective of voices that just annoy amy and kind of makes way for this comedic kind of plot to ensue but this is a great book it is classic marianne keys and i probably think it's one of her best i mean i've read quite a few of hers and i enjoy this one the most just because of its pure ridiculousness but also <laughs> infuriating kind of male characters um but yeah i really like this and marion keys is always a pleasure to read because it is a classic beach read so if you're looking for something that you can lay down in the sun and just devour because it's so juicy and filled with gossip and it feels like a reality tv show in a book then this is a one for you so that wraps up my list of five books that you should read this summer and I really hope you enjoyed this vlog and please leave a comment on any books that you think I should read this summer or any videos you'd like to see from me. I have just bought a massive load of Colleen Hoover books and I'm hoping to do a Colleen Hoover readathon for you all and probably rank and rate them at the end of the video. Um, but if you have any other ideas that you like for me to do then please leave a comment i'm always open for suggestions and thank you so much for watching this video i hope you had a lot of good ideas for what to get up to this summer but thank you very much don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye